to start um, off the presentation. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Luigi Faino, and I work in uh, Sapienza in Rome, and I work there since uh, three years now. So today I'm going to tell you something about the evolution of mini chromosome infusarium. And I hope that at the end of the presentation, you will uh, uh, agree with me that this is the right title of uh, this presentation. So uh, before starting into the result, I want to give you a bit of background. And uh, I think that people that work to, works with the uh, uh, fusarium knows about this phylogenetic tree here on the right, uh, on the left, sorry. And what you can see uh, here is uh, a basic phylogenetic tree of Fusarium uh, uh, genera. And what you can uh, see highlighted is the Fusarium fujigrois uh, species complex, which is a uh, species complex sister or brother of Fusarium uh, oxysprum species complex. In Fusarium, uh, they divide this, uh, uh, the genera in species complex because there are a few uh, species which are the not the same species, but they have some characteristic, some common characteristics. So here you can see the Fusarium fujigroi species complex, which is formed of uh, Fusarium proliferatum, Fusarium fujigroi, and then you have Fusarium uh, verticilloides. On the bottom here is Fusarium uh, graminearum species complex, then you have the Fusarium oxysporum um, species complex on top, and then you have the, let's say, the most different Fusarium, which is Fusarium solani. The Fusarium fujigoroi species complex is made, can be divided at least in three clades, which are the Asian clade, where Fusarium fujigoroi and Fusarium proliferatum are uh, located. Then you have the American clade, and then we have the African clade. And what we are going to talk about is about Fusarium verticilloides and Fusarium oxysporum, and at, at the end, at the end, you will have a bit of Fusarium solani. So uh, Fusarium verticilloides is uh, a pathogen if, uh, that can uh, infect maize. And in the middle here, you can see uh, the cycle, I would say, of the maize. And what you can uh, see on the outside of this, of this cycle is that uh, almost all, all uh, um, part of the, uh, all the uh, living cycle of maize can be infected of the, uh, from uh, Fusarium verticilloides. So here you can see like the roots can be infected and then it can move through the xylem or the stalk can be um, infected uh, or uh, even the hair, right? And here is where the problem comes because Fusanum verticilloides is able to uh, infect the grain and you can see here the white, which is the fungi that is uh, growing here again. And then uh, as many other fusarium, uh, it starts to produce mycotoxins. Well, you don't really know if it is at the end or is at the beginning, but yeah, the, the fact is that Fusarium verticilloides produce mycotoxin. And one of the most important one is uh, of monizins. So what, you, what we know about monizins is that it is uh, highly cancerogenic for, uh, uh, for humans and animals. So there is a very strict regulation of the uh, European community on the content of these mycotoxins into food. And what to, uh, people think is that uh, a good, about 30% of the uh, liver cancer could be derived by the assumption of this, uh, uh, consumption of this uh, uh, mycotoxin. So, you know, it's a big problem. So this is like uh, the relevance of Fusano verticilloides, verticilloides at the social scale, I would say. But then when we talk about Fusan verticilloides at uh, the research level, I think that we have to shift. Because the uh, Fusan verticilloides was, came, became huge, I would say, when there was the paper uh, of uh, Lee Juma uh, in 2010 uh, on Nature, where uh, uh, this group of researchers used Fusan verticilloides, which is here on the X axis, uh, of this diagram to compare against Fusarium oxysprum. I think that everyone that talk, that study Fusarium knows about this paper, but for the people that uh, do not really, are not really familiar with Fusarium, well, what I can tell you is that using this uh, dot plot, uh, they found that chromosome three, chromosome six, chromosome 14 and 15 of Fusarium oxysprum did not have any homology on the 
uh, homologous chromosome, I would say, on the Fusarium verticillatus genome. Okay, so here you have the chromosome of Fusarium verticillatus. And actually, this is uh, even depicted here. You can see chromosome 3, there is no color bar, like, for example, in chromosome 1, 2, and 4, meaning that there is no match with two Fusarium uh, verticillatus chromosomes. Okay, so what they did, the what they uh, described in this paper is that the Fusarium oxysporum uh, genome is made of a uh, core part of the genome and a dispensable part, and the dispensable part is made of chromosome 3, 6, 14, and 15. And uh, from now on, and the strain that they used is this uh, fall, uh, uh, Fusarium oxysporum forma specialis lycopersis 4287, and the Fusarium verticillus 7600, and uh, from now on, if you will uh, hear about fall, I refer to this strain. If you uh, have Fusarium verticillus 7600, uh, so is this strain, and sometimes I can refer to the Fusarium verticillus strain 7600 has a reference strain because this is the one that is deposited now at the broad. Our group uh, in Rome, uh, since long, is interested into uh, fumonisins and the mycotoxins in general. And this was in town 2014, where uh, they look, they found that this gene, LDS1, was involved in the regulation of growth, but conidation and fumonisin uh, production in Fusan verticillus. But the difference with what was done before is that in this paper, we used an Italian isolate. This uh, Italian isolate is called Fusanum verticilloides item 10,027. In short, SD 10,027 or Fusanum verticilloides Italian strain from now on. Okay, so we have the Italian strain and we have the reference strain. So in 2014-15, um, a very talented PhD student arrived to the lab. And then what he did, he did something that uh, apparently, I mean, if you think about it, it's very simple, but what he did is to take this, uh, the reads coming from the Lumina sequencing of this strain, which was in, used in the previous paper, and then he assembled into Contic and then aligned this Contic on the reference strain, the one that was sequenced by uh, Lee Juma in 2010. And then what he found that about 76% of the uh, reads of the contig were not mapping to the reference strain. So here, you know, things start to be a bit, uh, what is going on here? So what we did again uh, in a, an independent approach, different approach, so we the, we know the genome size of Fusarium verticilloides reference strain, so the 7,600, 42 and B. So using a KMR estimate, what we found is that the Fusarium verticilloides Italian strain, right, or as a bigger genome, 46 MB. Again, we have something that is extra. So here it came the first question, which was, um, are these extra genomic regions true? I mean, we could have a contamination during the Illumina sequencing, we could have uh, a bacterial infection, we could have so many things, right? So it could be just an error. So what we did, we isolated again the strain and uh, we went through um, nanopore sequencing. Nanopore sequencing because you have long reads and uh, the, the genome that you would assemble would be much better. And then maybe you can make even larger, uh, big structure chromosomal uh, uh, comparison, okay? So uh, just to give you an idea what we got uh, using solely um, nanopore sequence and Illumina to correct the uh, errors that you would retain from uh, the assembly of a nanopore sequencing data. So we got uh, 21 contig, and you see the Fusarium verticilloid has seven, um, the reference strain has 24 scaffolds. The difference between contig and scaffold is that contig do not have any end into the assembly, while scaffolds, you have ends in between contigs. Now, the largest contig is comparable to the, what we had, to what we have into the reference train. The total length here, the first difference, right? I told you that the Italian strain was larger than the reference train. And again, we found this back. 
So you can see that we have close to 3 MB of differences with the Italian strain being the uh, most, uh, the largest one. GC content the same, uh, these other stats the same. Of course, as I told you, these are scaffolds. So you have N right into your assembly. We do not have N. And then another thing that struck me was the number of genes. So we have 16,000 16, genes into the Italian strain. And these are for sure genes because I personally looked at each one of them. So I uh, took the genome annotation and then I went through with the genome browser to look if these were true or not. And when you look at the, at the genome uh, annotation of the reference strain, you see close to 2,000 genes of difference. However, if you, a bit look in, if you look into literature, what you can find is this paper here in, on genome biology and evolution, which they report close to 16,000 gene models for the Fusan University Silloid at 7,600. However, I was not able to find this GFF3 or this gene model. So I don't know how these people came out with, this gene, with these numbers and where and if they are deposited somewhere. Anyhow, we have 16,000 genes. Maybe the other one has like 300 genes less. And then the amount of repeats, but yeah, the amount of repeats, we cannot really say anything because most probably um, the difference is because there are ends. You know that every time that there are a, a repetitive, repetitive element into a genome, uh, if you use short reads um, sequencing, then you are not able to uh, assemble your repetitive uh, regions. So most probably the amount of re the difference in amount of repeat is because of the uh, better assembly using nanobot. Okay. Uh, and then now I want to introduce you the genome that we actually were able to assemble. So here you can see the chromosome size. Then in red are reported the gene models. You can see these genes are really, these, ge these genomes are really, really compact. They have 60% of the genome is covered by genes. And then a few points here, you can see in green, some repeats, and then you have a drop of genes, for example, here. And yeah, uh, we think that this could be a centrally. This is not always the case. So what I mean is that in few cases, like here, here, and here, and here, you can find this correspondence, but in other, no. So we think that the few contexts still represent part of the chromosome. Of course, I think that as everyone would do, the first thing that, the second thing that you would do is to uh, look for uh, the correspondence between Fusarium verticilloides reference strain and the Italian strain. So again, you have a very good collinearity, I would say. And as I told you, there are a few, for example, contexts like this that are maybe split so, you know, everything looks good because we don't have an optical map. So we cannot really say, for example, here you have uh, an error into the assembly or something like this. But for the time being, I think that everything looks good. If you look at the table, you can find that these are in red, are reported 11 contexts, which represent all these contexts here on, on the left, you have the Italian strain that match with the core genome of the reference thing, right? But then if you look closely, you find these contexts here, which they do not have any match to the reference thing, which are reported on the bottom in black here. So we start to look into this. And the first one that we look at is this UTG13L is about 750 KB. And the characteristic of this guy is something really, um, I think that is really um, nice, which and is that uh, this contig has two telomeric repeat at the end, so to the left and to the right side. And uh, actually we think that this 13L is a full chromosome because we have even a, a region in the middle that look like uh, a centrum. However, uh, we still have this other one here, you know, we don't know what they are. So what we did, we did uh, a shaft gel, and here you can see the size of the band, 
So this is like in uh, uh, KB. So this would be 50, 750 KB height. And actually, if you see, there is a band here that is about 750 KB. And we think that this band represents this guy here. But if you look, I think that is evident that we have even an higher band, which is about 10 billion, okay? Which are actually not present in the Poussin verticilloides reference band, because this is the lane for the Poussin verticilloides reference band, right? So what is this? Well, if I pull up again the, the list of contic, what you can see is that if I, well, you, sh you can do it by I, but I think that uh, uh, you can uh, um, agree with me that you have uh, all this garbage, I would say garbage meant as a small contic, okay? Um, almost they sum up to a million. So what we think is that we have 11 core chromosomes that are the contig in black, we have one mini chromosome, which is fully assembled, which is this one in red. And then we have this other mini chromosome here, which is higher, which is about a million. Okay. And is the sum of all these other contig that we were not able to put them together. Okay. So uh, I think that by now you, you realize that the Italian strain that we were able to sequence with nanopore has about uh, um, 13 chromosomes, which is much more than what was reported by, reported by Lima, which, uh, because they said that the Cusarin um 7,600 has only 11 chromosomes. So we have two additional chromosomes uh, with the size that range between 1 million and 750 KB. Okay. So uh, as I told you, this is an Italian strain. So the first thing that we did was like, okay, maybe what is going on here is that we have uh, the Italian isolates that are different from the other isolates. Because one thing that I didn't tell you is that uh, the Fusarium verticilloides 700, 7,600 was isolated into in US. So what if we have a population of, in Italy, we have a population of Fusarium verticilloides that uh, uh, is different from the American one. So we asked uh, a collaborator uh, at the University of, uh, of Turin to send us samples of maize infected with the Fusarium versicillodes. And you can see that they span almost the full uh, um, uh, uh, area of Italy where we grow maize, which is in the north. We selected 24 of these strains and we sequenced with the Illumina a shallow sequence, like 10x, 15x coverage. And then here is what the first results are. So you have a phylogenetic tree. Uh, in this phylogenetic tree, you can see the FD10,027. You can see the FD10,700, uh, um, uh, so the reference train. And then what you would expect is that, for example, this train that they get together, right? They were isolated almost from the same point, or this one, they would cluster together on the tree because ge geographically they are very close to each other. But actually this is not the case. Uh, what we have here is that there is a mixture of strain. Another thing that is surprising, at least to me, I don't know about you, uh, but this uh, BRIP are Fusarium verticilloides isolated in um, Australia. And I would expect that at least that one that come from so far, so the they were isolated in Australia from maize, these two, and this one it was from sorghum. I would expect that at least these three, they would cluster together. They are from Australia, all the others, but these are Italians. But actually this is not the case. You can see that these Fusarium verticilloides, they just get into the mixture of the Italian strains, okay? So this is at the SNP level, right? So this is the uh, phylogenetic tree based using a, a software called the real fee and it only looks at SNPs. So it does not look at presence, absence of chromosomes. So again, we have the same cycle. We have the genes, we have the, uh, the repeats. And now what you see these dots is the average coverage 
of all the other 24 strains. So where you have something that is much darker blue means that there is less coverage, while if there is light blue means that these regions are covered by the sequence of all the other strains that we sequence, that we, at least we use, right? So again, I think that you can see that here there is a dark blue, not a lot of coverage. So, and these are these regions that are these two chromosomes that I told you before. So the next question was, are these dispensable, re are these uh, regions, right, um, common or uh, clustering with the geographical position of the strains, right? Well, what I can tell you is, is not really the same. It's not really this because, so these are the uh, strains, right? That they do have this extra part, which is here represented. You see, you have this white block. The white block are the uh, regions in the genome that they are these mini chromosomes, right? And what you can see here is that the majority of the strains are white, so they do not have coverage. And few strains like this, the 333, 021, 044, you see they have a coverage in this region, right? But actually they are located very far from each other. So again, not even the mini chromosomes are uh, clustering with the geographical position of the strains from where these strains were isolated, okay? So, okay, what I think is that uh, in Italy, we have a population of Fusan verticilloides that they came in and come out like maybe with seeds, right? Or with contaminated material. So to answer the question, well, yes, they are true. So we have extra regions in this Fusan verticilloides that we isolated in Italy. Uh, and this extra region makes two dispensable mini chromosomes because as I told you, uh, in few strains, we have them in the majority of the strains, we do not have these two mini chromosomes. So they are dispensable. The next question that we have is, uh, where do they come from, right? I mean, um, can we understand the origin of them, right? So uh, again, what we have here, if I take uh, this time now, I pass to the, I go to the uh, gene level, right? So what I did, I took all the genes codified into the genome, so the 16,000 genes. And then what I did is I aligned them against the uh, NR database. And then from the NR database, I um, extrapolated the best match of this chromosome with which species actually they had the best match. So as you can see here, the unit U, uh, UTG uh, 1L, the majority of the genes has as a best match, the majority of the proteins, sorry, uh, as a best match with Fusanum versicilloides. And this is normal because they are very close to each other. So the best identity would be with the, the brother and not with the cousin, okay? But then what you can see already is that there are few genes that as a best match, they have Fusanum oxysporum. And this may be normal because I told you that um, the genome uh, of Fusan verticilloides, the one that was uh, deposited, is not really very well annotated at gene model level, right? So maybe this could be the reason. But the astonishing thing, at least to me, is when we move to the dispensable part of the, of the genome. So these are the contexts, right, that they make the dispensable part of the genome, so the two mini chromosomes. And what you can see here is that the best match is not with a very closer species like it could be proliferatum or uh, fujikuroi. But the, the best match comes with genes from Fusarium oxysporum. So look like that these uh, dispensable chromosomes of Fusarium verticilloides has something in common with the Fusarium oxysporum genome, okay? And I think that everyone knows what Fusarium oxysporum does. The so Fusarium oxysporum is a species that is able to uh, deliver, I would say, dispensable chromosome into other Fusarium oxysporum, right? So you can have uh, a chromosome, a dispensable chromosome from one Fusarium oxysporum moved to another 
for the MOOC system that does not have it. Okay? So I did the same analysis that I showed you before, but now what I focused on is, okay, I have Fusan Moxis Room as a, a database, and then I want to check if from where, from which part of the Fusan Moxis Room genome, uh, the genes come from. So what you can see here is that the UTG001L, the majority of the genes on this contig come from chromosome 9 of Fusan Moxis Room. This is the way that you should look at this table. So the UTG2L, the majority of the genes come from chromosome 2. UTG4L, the majority of the genes come from chromosome 1. But now what's happened if we look at the um, at the dispensable part of Fusan Moxis Room? Well, I think that here is quite clear that the majority of the genes that are present at the uh, dispensable genome of Fusanum verticilloides, Italian stain, right, uh, come from the dispensable part of Fusanum oxysprum, chromosome 3, chromosome 6, 14, and 15, the one that I was telling you before, right? There are few genes that do not match on this part. So here, you know, things start to become crazy into the lab when I was talking with my colleagues because it looks like at a certain point there was a share between Fusanum verticilloides and Fusanum oxysprum and maybe there was this uh, sharing of dispensable part. Then I start to investigate the dispensable part of Fusanum verticilloides. And if you look carefully into the paper of Lima uh, of 2010, what you find is that uh, they say that the dispensable part of Fusanum oxysprum from a specialist silicopair CC comes from multiple horizontal gene transfer. And they, one of their strong um, evidence is that uh, there is a codon usage uh, bias between the core chromosome of Fusanum oxysprum and the dispensable part. So I made a similar analysis. And this is what you can see. So if you imagine that uh, the dispensable part is in uh, blue, right? So this blue represents the codon usage of uh, the genes on the dispensable part of Fusarium oxysprum from a specialist of diversity. And in uh, red is the uh, core part. Then you can see that there is, again, what they were saying, right? There is uh, the blue part points into this direction while the um, core part points in a different direction. So actually there is this codon bias between the core part and the dispensable part. But you can see the same in Fusanum oxysprum from a speciality comparison. So again, we do have something shared between the dispensable part of Fusanum oxysprum from a speciality comparison and the Italian strain dispensable part, Fusanum verticilloides dispensable part. But uh, how can we understand if we have a horizontal gene transfer or a non-horizontal gene transfer? Well, I want to spend a few minutes on this uh, and I, I will try to guide you through uh, this uh, idea. So what you have is that uh, um, you have uh, a KS value, which is the number of synonymous substitution for synonymous time, uh, for synonymous uh, uh, position. So this means that we only look for substitution that they do not have an effect on the selection because these are synonymous substitution. So if you have a, a core part, right? If you have um, a, uh, so you have a species A and a species B, right? So what you have is that in the, between species A and species B, the core and the dispensable part they evolve along the same trajectory, right? So if you take the, if you take all the pair of genes between them, between the species A and species B, and you make a distribution of KS, so of synonymous substitution per synonymous site, you will have this kind of distribution. You have a box plot where you have an average of KS, right? Of course, because the dispensable 
chromosome would have the same trajectory, even the dispensable part would have the same distribution. If now you look at species B and C, where you have this horizontal gene transfer, what you can see is that the time that passes between the split okay, of the core part, it's much higher uh, compared to the horizontal transfer here. So you have the horizontal transfer, and then this is only the time that will pass from now to when the horizontal uh, happened, right? So this Kf value for the dispensable part should be much less because it had less time to evolve independently, okay? Of course, to have a good comparison between verticilloides and oxysporum, you cannot use genes that are, that are not at one-to-one uh, -one ratio. If you have genes that match two times on any of these genomes, you have to discard because this would tell you, would uh, give you a bias in your analysis. So basically what I did, I look for genes that were in a single copy in the dispensable part of Fusarium verticilloides and matching one gene of Fusarium oxysporum dispensable part. And then I compare to the core always in a ratio one to one. So what did I get? Well, if you have horizontal gene transfer, you should have that the dispensable part has a lower KS value. If there is no horizontal gene transfer, there should be the same KS values, more or less. And what I found actually is that the Fusarium, that the dispensable part has a higher KS value compared to the core. So with this data, I can for sure, I, all, I can say that for almost certain that the Fusarium uh, verticilloides dispensable part was not originated by a horizontal gene transfer between Fusarium oxysporum and Fusarium verticilloides because the KS value, it should be like this, lower. But actually in my case, the dispensable part has a KS value higher, right? than the core itself. So the horizontal gene transfer for me can go out of the table. But of course, one case doesn't make the rule. I think that this is the case. We, we want to have replicates and maybe independent replicates. So if you dig a bit into literature, what you can find is Fusarium solani. Well, the, the beauty of, Sol uh, of, of having uh, so if you read this paper, the, the paper of Coleman, you will find that uh, even in Fusarium solano, there are dispensable chromosomes. So Fusarium solani has three dispensable chromosomes. So if there is a, a common origin within the Fusarium genera, right, of this dispensable chromosome, I should have a pattern. So again, let's have a look. So what we can find is that again, this is the plot of before. So you have the core KS value, and this is the dispensable KS value, right? So you see the KS is higher. And if we look at the pair, Fusarium oxysporum from a specialist oligoversity with fold, with a Fusarium solano, again, the core KS increased because the split was much earlier between this group and Fusarium solano. So this is correct but even the KS value increase. So basically what you see here is that there is a gene that are common between Fusarium oxysporum and Fusarium verticilloides, as well as genes that are in common between Fusarium oxysporum oligopersis and Fusarium solan dispensable chromosome. So meaning that, uh, you know, this already tells you something that there should be something common into the Fusarium genera. And then if you look even deeper, you have uh, that the, this, there are genes common between the dispensable part of Fusarium verticilloides and Fusarium solani. So this tells me that uh, the things are much more complicated than horizontal gene transfer, because if the horizontal gene transfer would be between these two, right, I should not find these genes. Uh, so it, it becomes complicated. To explain this, there are two possibility. One possibility is that you have a, a core part, then you have this dispensable chromosome that originated, 
and then there is one jump okay and then this will be this jump here reflected this horizontal gene transfer which is reflected by these two plot here by these two uh, blue box plot and then again this will continue 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 and then there is a subsequent horizontal gene transfer between this fusarium oxytrum and fusarium versicillores which will be then reflected here this would be one explanation but then it requires two horizontal gene transfer another explanation very simple explanation is that you have the dad i would say or the mother of the fusariums they will have already a dispensable part and a core part and then both evolved you know independently but in all these three species and uh, but the question that it comes is why this uh, ks rather is always higher than the core ks well this is because uh, i think that you know that if you have a gene and this gene is going to duplicate uh, while well, gene A will be continuing having the function that it has, but gene A1 will have freedom of uh, um, evolve because it doesn't have any function. So this could explain why the dispensable part of the genome has an higher KS value because it will evolve faster because it doesn't have any attachment to a function. Um, okay. But then, you know, the, the, the point, I mean, that is still when this dispensable region originated. Well, this is now uh, my working model, and I can tell you on what I'm working. Well, to make all these uh, comparisons, you have to find homologous gene. If you find homologous gene, you can make the comparison. To find the comp homologous gene, I use a software that is called OrthoFinder. OrthoFinder is able to look for duplicated genes into a tree. Well, I think that if you look carefully to this tree, maybe after, you will see that there are uh, some numbers attached to like N1449. So this means that at this branch, there are 49 genes that have a duplicate compared to this other branch here. To make a story short, because I'm not going to bother you about this, what you can see is that the lines that brings back to the Fusarium oxysprum or Fusarium uh, melonis or Fusarium oxysprum radicis cucumerinum, they have a lot of duplications. This may be due to the fact that at a certain point there was a duplication somewhere here, right? And then these few strains, this, this uh, line kept this duplication, and then uh, by losing genes, right, you have, um, and this you can see even better here, you see you have these genes that are, these are the amount of genes that are duplicated in this branch here and not in this. And again, these are the numbers that are duplicated here, but not here. So basically what it looks like is that at a certain point in the fusarium, there was a duplication somewhere. I don't know if there was a duplication or an hybridization, but then this enlarged the genome and then time by time this genome reduced. And maybe we add all these species that are originated. Okay, so just to tell you where do they come from? Well, to my opinion, the, the, the dispensable part of Fusarium versicillodes has a common origin with the Fusarium oxysprum forma specialis, Lycopersici and Solano, uh, dispensable region. Of course, here there is the, the $1 million question, I would say. What are they for? Well, uh, this I don't know yet. And I, I can explain you why. Uh, we are trying to make tests with Fusarium Verticillides in the lab. So this is maze uh, that was uh, made where you make a hole in between here, and then uh, you put spores, right? And then you wait for seven days, and then you may find this brownish. Uh, well, we are not really successful to do this. Uh, we are not very good in making this experiment. One, because you need to have a very old plants. We don't have a lot of space. Uh, yeah, we don't, we, we cannot make yet uh, this, uh, this, uh, this experiment. And another way that we do this test is we have seeds. We have this seed then uh, with the fusarium spores, and then we let them colonize. But the problem of this 
test is that is not that much sensible. So right now what we are doing is to try to look for uh, putative effectors maybe on this dispensable part and then to make a knockout and then use one of these two tests to compare, right, the, um, the disease and to see if uh, the selected effectors are effector or not. And here is where I think uh, I would like to say something. Well, uh, we do not know yet uh, what they are for and if there is something good. But uh, what I would like to do is to, let's say, cry for help. If someone works with Susanna Verticillodes and um, has a test or can make a test that is uh, uh, reliable and uh, sensitive, well, please uh, contact me because we can easily send out this train and you can uh, make this um, this test and then we can collaborate on this. Uh, currently, uh, we do not have a test that works in the lab and we need kind of uh, help. And with this, I would like to conclude. I would like to thank uh, my direct uh, boss supervisor, I would say, Massimo Reverberi. And then uh, here we have uh, uh, our bioinformatician. This is Alessandro Rotoli, which, which did the first part of the work and the one that started the project our lab technician, Valentina, Andrea, Manuel to PhDs, and Marcia, which is our uh, jack of all trades for the lab. And the collaboration with Maria Aragona, Darren Brown, and Massimo Berdini from uh, Italian and um, other university. And uh, thank you for the attention. I would be happy to get to answer any question. Oh, thank you so much, Luigi. That was very fascinating um, research. So I really have some questions um, for you from um, some of our audience. So the first question is, the Italian phys uh, Fusarium verticelloides isolates that do not contain the one um, MB and the 0.7 MB chromosomes, do they contain different non-homogeneous dispensable chromosomes? So uh, this is a good question. So we are uh, currently making a uh, uh, shaft gel to try to understand that. And uh, what we see, um, and actually I think that you can, well, sorry, I, I want to go back because this is something that um, uh, I, I want to show. Um, yeah, they do have, I don't know if you, if people can see but even Fusanium versticelloides, the reference strain here, that is a small band. And we know that Fusanium versticelloides, the reference strain, has a mini chromosome of 350 MB. So yes, they do have. The problem is that uh, with Illumina data, we cannot really assemble them. So what we did is to start to do chef gel. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is things that are still uh, running and then the COVID arrived, so we could not really do it and uh, yeah. So, but yeah, uh, we know that the variability at the mini chromosomes is quite high within the strain that we look at. Ah, thank you. Next question is, has anyone tried chromosome transfer experiments between Fusarium oxysporum and other Fusarium species? Oh, uh, um, that I know, no. I talked with Martin Rep that I think that is the one that makes all this experiment, and uh, I don't think so. But uh, um, yeah, uh, of course, this could be something to try, even because there are, uh, yeah, I think that is something that we may try. And actually, I was planning to send a student to Martin to maybe to do even this kind of uh, experiment. I think that he is the one to go to, to do this experiment. But then, one thing that we would like to do with, uh, with other people, like um, in, uh, in Kansas, is to, for example, check, you can make population between Fusarium verticelloides. So what we would like to do is to maybe cross these two and see how this guy, then they handle the, yeah, the sexual cycles. But yeah, um, Fusarium oxysprum verticelloides that I'm aware of, no. Um, how many SIX um, or six effector genes are present in the Fusarium verticelloides? Have you looked at any of those? None, zero. No. There is, there, there is nothing, no. Actually, the, actually um, to make the story true, the Fusarium oxysprum uh, chromosomes are completely dispensable chromosomes, are completely different than the Fusarium versticillodes. 
and this starts already with the amount of repeats. So I think that in the Lima paper, they say that the 90, 90 plus percent of the repeats are present into the dispensable chromosome of Fusarium oxysprum, while in Fusarium verticilloides uh, is not happening. So what I think that is happening is that, I mean, they have a different history at a certain point, okay? In Fusarium verticilloides, there are no six genes. That's it. Very interesting. So um, the Fusarium verticilloides is dispensable chromosome comes from an ancestor. Could it be a vertical chromosome transfer instead of a horizontal chromosome transfer? I don't know. Well, you know, uh, for this, I, while I was presenting, I was saying um, that could be even a kind of hybridization. Uh, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out, but this is, it's very difficult because this event that I, that I mentioned would be very, very old and it's very difficult to investigate. Um, yeah, I don't know, can be. I, I, I mean, if the person that wrote this question has an idea on how to check this, please drop me an email or Slack or whatever, uh, a personal message on, uh, on Twitter. I would be happy to test. Thank you. So um, is there any difference in the hosts between the Italian um, isolate, uh, the Fusarium verticilloides 127, and the Fusarium verticilloides 760, so the reference strength? Perhaps resistant Both. varieties of maize? Uh, yeah, so this is a good question. I was not able to retrieve uh, any, I was not able to retrieve uh, information on the maize itself. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot answer this question. Uh, but yeah, the only thing that I can say is that both of them were isolated from maize. I, I, I don't know, I cannot say. Uh, I, I do not have this, uh, it's a pity, but I do not have this information right now. And I'm not sure that I will ever be able to retrieve them. Um, if you were to take an educated guess, do you think there would be some, some differences that could potentially be observed? I hope, I hope in the sense that, you know, for me, it would be nice to test different variety of maize and then see if, you know, because there is a, one thing that, I'm sorry to go back and forth with the presentation, but so it's true that the strains that do not have, um, they, do, they, they have these regions, right? Uh, they are different apart. But then if you see, they clusterize in the north. So what if what's happening here is that maybe they are on a hill and then all these guys use the same uh, hybrid because maybe they are at a higher level of interdis. So, you know, it can be that uh, this dispensable part gives um, a fitness advantage on a different maize line or cultivar or hybrid, but I do not have information right now. I need to do experiment to, to understand that. Right, so thank you very much, Luigi. I'm going to ask any more, any last questions um, before we um, close up for today. Right, and so another thing that I, yeah. Lisa, one thing that I'd like to say to the community, if you have a Fusarium uh, species that looks like that is more than 42 MB, but for some reasons you had the only Lumina data, please contact me. Uh, we have the nanopore in house and we can work out something to sequence this strain and then to have a bit more uh, uh, species of Fusarium, which would corroborate my, my story. Because if there is an ancestor that had this expansion, we should find more uh, sons or daughters that would have it. So I'm really interested in uh, uh, getting more strains that seems to have larger genome and, and to sequence them. Okay, so yeah. this is something that I'm telling to the community. Yeah, we should, maybe we can put that on the Twitter. Um, one more question quick, um, what percentage of the 200 to 300 extra genes in the Italian isolate encode for small secreted proteins? Yeah, so in general, there are uh, between uh, 10 and 15% and in overall the genome, and this is the same for the, call, for the dispensable as well. So I don't see any 
strong enrichment for the dispensable part in secreted or highly expressed genes. So it doesn't really look like that these guys are for virulence. But yeah, I cannot say. Maybe there is one gene and it's the most important one. You never know. <laughs> so thank you no. very much, Luigi, for your great presentation. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the audience for their participation. It's been a really um, great talk, and I think we've all learned something today. Um, I'd just like to also say for those of you that are interested um, in contributing to the OPP virtual seminar, you're welcome to submit um, on the Google Docs um, sheet. And then um, our next OPP virtual seminar will be um, with um, Idel Perez Lopez. Um, on the perfect market to identify and characterize phytoplasm. So thank you very much, Luigi. It was great to have you at our OPP virtual seminar. And we'll have maybe tweets about um, asking who else would like to collaborate with you with that after list. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.